in pursuit of health and wisdom. Sapio with Buck Joffrey. Stress is bad for you. We all know that. And we're trying not to be stressed. But when you understand just how bad stress is for you, you might actually be motivated enough to do something about it. And hopefully that idea doesn't stress you out. So anyway, let's talk about what's going on in your body when you get stressed. Much of that stress is manifested in your body through the release of a hormone from the adrenal glands called cortisol. Now, cortisol is not, you know, just a bad hormone, right? In fact, we need it to live because it plays a vital role in various body functions. In fact, cortisol levels being too low is a disease itself called Addison's disease, which we will not go into, but that's something actually that uh, John F. Kennedy had, believe it or not. The problem with stress is that it results in chronically elevated levels of cortisol, and those elevated levels, those chronically elevated levels of cortisol are what are you know, causing a lot of the detrimental effects on your health. You know that stress uh, is bad for your health instinctually, but let's go through the science about what we know about those uh, effects actually are. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with sleep because, again, instinctually, you know, when you are stressed, it is difficult to sleep. It's, it's, it's difficult to fall asleep. It's difficult to stay asleep. The inability to stay asleep is actually called uh, sleep fragmentation. And if that sounds familiar, it might be because of our recent show on Alzheimer's disease with my friend, Dr. John Foley, who's a neurologist, and he talks about how fragmented sleep can increase the risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. Uh, We call that altered sleep architecture. Stress can alter the normal pattern of sleep stages, which we discuss uh, again in in Sapio episode five, uh, particularly reducing the proportion of what's called a rapid eye movement sleep, which is crucial for emotional regulation and memory. I started with sleep because if you listen to my show regularly, you know that sleep is one of the pillars of longevity. And poor sleep is associated with, frankly, all sorts of disease processes. It's pretty, not, pretty much not all of them. So not surprisingly, all of the ones I'm going to mention below for stress in a minute They've all actually been shown to be the result of poor sleep as well. So what happens, chicken or the egg? I don't know. But anyway, for example, a study published in the American Journal of Cardiology found a direct correlation between chronic stress and the increased incidence of cardiovascular disease. Chronic stress leads to sustained high cortisol levels, which contribute to hypertension, plaque buildup in the arteries, and eventually that is a uh, going to cause an increased risk of heart attacks and strokes. By the way, again, so does uh, the lack of sleep, right? Uh, Elevated cortisol levels have also been linked to depression and anxiety disorders, just like sleep. Uh, There was a study in the Journal of Psychiatry and Neuroscience that highlighted that prolonged exposure to high cortisol can actually alter the brain structures and functions, particularly in the regions associated with emotional regulation and memory such as the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex. Get sick when you're stressed? Well, I do. That's just the worst, right? You're super stressed. And finally, all of a sudden, the stress maybe goes away. You've been working really hard. You know, you were studying really hard at some point, and then the test was over, and then you get sick. Well, the reason may be that the immune system function is also impacted by stress. You see, chronic stress and high cortisol can suppress the immune function that was seen in the the Journal of Psychoneuroendocrinology, which showed a study showing that reduced lymphocyte proliferation and natural killer cell activity was present in individuals with prolonged stress. Again, like I said, you, it's not surprising, right? These are things that you're experiencing every day. You're super stressed out, whatever, and the next thing you know, you get sick. That's why there's actually a suppression of the immune system that's leading to an increased susceptibility to infections and uh, also slower healing processes. And also, by the way, that immune system that's getting suppressed over a long period of time we rely on that immune system to kill cancer cells as well because little cancer cells pop up in people's lives 
And we don't even know about them because our immune system takes care of them. But if the immune system does not, the next thing you know, you've got cancer. So again, the immune system and cancer, those are other things to think about. What else? Well, stress and chronic increased levels of cortisol can also lead to metabolic syndromes, which are a cluster of conditions that include increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and and abnormal cholesterol levels. Finally, there is research that directly implicates stress in affecting longevity. In other words, stress will decrease your life. Now, there was research that was published in the journal Nature that indicates that chronic stress actually accelerates cellular aging when measured by shortening telomere length. Those are the protective caps at the end of chromosomes. And when those shorten, that is, uh, suppose that's certainly one way people have used to measure the aging process. And obviously, as I mentioned, the stress doesn't help with that situation. Shortened telomeres, again, are associated with premature aging and increased uh, risk of age-related diseases. So by now, you were thinking, you did know that stress was bad for you. I get it. But I just need to explain sort of like it's more, it's probably more of a problem than people appreciate. This is something that you really need to address as much as you can, not only for like all these physiological reasons, but just because, you know, it's a quality of life issue. So, you know, I, I mentioned, you know, the things that stress affects and we started with sleep. Let's go back to how we can potentially, you know, decrease our levels of stress. And well, again, we have to start with sleep. Try to get better sleep. That's easier said than done. But of course, um, you know, as I've alluded to, all of these disease processes associated with stress are also associated with poor sleep. So again, maybe the effects of stress are ultimately downstream of sleep problems that are associated with stress. It's hard to know. But what we do know is that, you know, poor sleep also makes your stress worse. And then there's a positive feedback. So You've got to try to improve your sleep. I've talked about this a lot on on this show on Sapio with Buck Joffrey about the importance of sleep. Uh, If you want a primer on that, I mean, sleep is actually one of the tenets of longevity that I talked about with Dr. Alan Viglione. Go back and check out episode five. That's probably a good starting point. Now, perhaps one of the most powerful and free medications for stress and virtually all diseases, is exercise. Again, I don't know how many times I've told people who are stressed or feeling depressed, have you have you gone out and exercised? Regular physical activity, particularly aerobic exercise, significantly reduces stress levels. There's no doubt about it. Um, and it helps not only in reducing cortisol, but also stimulates the production of endorphins, which are the body's natural mood elevators. In other words, you know, you're not only going to reduce, uh, you know, your cortisol levels, but you're actually going to feel happier in the process. And of course, now you're talking about decreasing your stress levels by doing that, right? So, so that's another thing. Now, mindfulness and meditation there, I bring this up because, you know, this is something I've done over the years, never done regularly. Um, But, you know, you talk to any regular, uh, somebody who's been doing meditation regularly for years, and they're going to be some of the most relaxed people you know, they're like Teflon. It's hard to, hard to get them stressed, right? And there's lots of studies here. There's a Journal of uh, American Medical Association study that shows that mindfulness meditation can reduce psychological stress and anxiety and that regular practice helps in decreasing cortisol levels and improving emotional regulation. It's all over the literature. So that is, a, again, a, a big one. Another thing that may Not be so obvious, but at the same time, when you think about it, it is. It's social support, engaging in social activities and maintaining strong personal relationships. Um, Again, that's documented. That's documented having a a strong correlation with, uh, you know, stress reduction. And if you think about it, uh, it makes sense again, right? A lot of this stuff just makes sense. Just think about the last time you were super stressed and you just went and hung out with some friends you went out to dinner and you just forgot about stuff for a while and guys, your stress levels went way down and you left that, you know, gathering feeling much better. I mean, I am very guilty of this one. I don't get out that much. I need to get out more. Social support is really critical in, in decreasing stress. Other stuff in, in the literature that's out there that's real and helpful if, if you're up for it or yoga and Tai Chi uh, there's cognitive behavioral therapy. 
There's deep breathing techniques. You know, anything actually that can also stimulate the the parasympathetic nervous system. In fact, um, chanting can do that too because of the effects on the vagus nerve uh, through the back of the, the back of the throat. Anyway, one final strategy that I think again is very simple to employ, and I'm going to just uh, suggest it because I think it's been really good for me because I am a hiker. I like to hike. That's one of the ways I get my level two exercise too. Although I haven't been hiking as much as I should be, is exposure to nature. Okay, studies show that spending time outside in nature can lower cortisol levels, reduce stress, and improve mood. So if you're out there hiking. You can potentially get your level two exercise in. You're getting your balance, uh, all that kind of stuff uh, that's important in terms of your physical, your physical self. And also, you can potentially decrease your stress levels. So hiking may be uh, nature's panacea. Bottom line is, not surprising, there's a tremendous amount of data suggesting stress is bad for you. But there's a lot of things you can do about it. So don't get stressed out. Just go try some of this stuff. That's it for me. For Sapio with Buck Joffrey, this is Buck Joffrey signing off. Thanks for listening to Sapio with Buck Joffrey. A quick reminder that while I am, in fact, a surgeon, nothing I say should be construed as medical advice. Now, make sure to include your physician in any medical decisions you make. And also, if you're enjoying the show, please make sure to show your support with a like, share, or subscribe. Until next time, this is Buck Joffrey for Sapio with Buck Joffrey.